Okay, Heath, electrical testers. Love it because I do a little bit of electrical work. Terrifies me that I'm going to electrocute myself. So I always want to know if something's energized or not. No electrocuting yourself. And these are very, very important. These make, make it very easy to identify whether something is energized. And the importance of that is to make sure that it's off when you're working on it. Yep. Or if it's on, if it's wired correctly, or if there's a problem going on, what's going on. And I'm glad to see that a pro like you actually uses them because uh, I thought it was just <laughs> me. You just thought it was going to lick the finger and touch it? No. <laughs> I've seen it before. <laughs> All right, so what do you want to start with? So we'll start with this one. This is one of the easiest ones to use. This is something a homeowner ought to have. It's just a contactless voltage tester. Now, it's mm. not going to tell you what's there for voltage, but it's going to tell you something is or isn't energized. Right. So for here, we can put it to that prong. Here at Chirp, we can tell there's something going on there. We don't know how much, but we know that it's energized somewhat. We know that it's energized, yeah. right. And it's not just for um, plugging into a receptacle. Right. If you've got a wire exposed or a cord coming in and you want to know if the fans... Exactly. Just touch Same it. Same thing. Gotcha. Okay. Now, the one drawback to these is they're great. They're really, really good. They're not perfect. So, because it is contactless, you can get phantom readings occasionally. If you put it on the wrong spot, it, you may think it's not energized, and it is. Okay. So, you always want to follow up with an actual contact tester if you're going to work on something. And, and by contact, you mean it literally has got probes. Right. And you expect those to make contact with the thing either in the receptacle or the cord of the switch that has got the energy. Exactly. So, for me, I'll use this. This is my multimeter. This does a lot more than a typical homeowner would need, but having a simpler version of this is still a good thing. Is this a simpler version? And this is a simpler version. So, so how does this work? So this is simply, we'll take that and we'll plug it in. And when it lights up, it gives you several different levels to tell you what voltage is present. So the lighting up tells me that you've got power. Yep. And then I'm seeing 24 volt, 48 volt, 120 volt, and 240. Correct. The first three are lit up. So that tells me that that's it's getting 120 volt? 120 volt to this, yes. But not 240. Correct. Okay, and so that's going to help you know what that outlet, receptacle, switch, or whatever is getting for power. Exactly. So if you use this first and for some reason it didn't go off, you double checked it with this. Oh, wait a minute, I really do have power there. I want to make sure we shut that off. Any chance of false or phantom readings for that? or With this, you shouldn't. No, this is direct contact. This should work. Gotcha. Okay, and then uh, this cute little guy <laughs> right here. This little guy actually gives you a lot more information than you'd think. All right, so I'm seeing a grid on the front. It's yeah. got a, well, so there are three indicators. Yep. And on the grid right here, it's got different combinations. The first one is off, middle one's on, second one, so forth. Exactly. What's this telling us? So we can't use it on the two prong, which is why something like that works well. Mm -hmm. But if you have three prongs, this will give you a perfect indication of what's going on. So you plug this in, it'll show which lights are lit up. So on, on, off, yep. and on that grid, if I may. And I look at that, on, on, off says hot, neutral, reverse. Did I get that right? Hot, That's neutral, right. reverse? So we have reverse polarity. Which means what? So that means the black wire and the white wire are actually reversed on the receptacle. On the receptacle. So when you have a receptacle like this and you wire it, yep. there's a specific way to wire it. So the brass screw would get the black wire, the white screw or the silver screw will get the white neutral wire and the green will get the ground. And if you do that correctly, you're okay. And if you do it incorrectly, you'll, it'll still work? It still works, but not properly. What do I care if it still works? Because it's a safety hazard. How so? So you wouldn't think so. You'd think you'd plug something in. It, it operates. What's the difference? What does it matter? Say you had this metal lamp. Okay. We got a desk lamp right here. We got a bulb. We yeah. turn it on. We're working. And this particular one is wired correctly. Nothing, something, something, which means correct. Correct. <laughs> it says correct. <laughs> so, so the hot wire is correct, the neutral is correct, and the ground is correct. Everything is good in this. And that's great. But if it was backwards, if we were to take that. that this is the one that we've already indicated is. Is reverse polarity. Reverse polarity, right? right. So this is still working. This is still working. On, off, no yep. problem. We can kind of show here. We have we, power there. Up to the bulb. Turn the switch. Oh. We shouldn't have power there. No. Wait. So that's... Hang on a second. That's energized up there? That's still energized. So the reverse... So if I were to take this bulb out and I were to touch that right. socket right there... Especially with a lamp like this, you have this metal lamp and you have that brass shell right there. You're waiting to get zapped. Why is that happening with the wires reversed? Because in a socket, the center pin wants to be the hot wire, wants to be the black. The shell wants to be the neutral. Right. When it's reversed, it goes the other way around. 
So and it's also the switch is now turning the neutral off and not turning the hot conductor off. So there's a little pin in there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to touch it. That's supposed <laughs> to be don't. the hot. The shell's supposed to be the neutral. Those are now reversed, which means the power's coming to the shell. The Correct. Really? If we put it back the way it should be. Let's put that bulb in. Okay, hang on. This is confusing. <laughs> so it still looks like it worked. You're like, what's the difference? Still energized. Go ahead and turn the switch off. It. Now it's wired the way it should be. That center pin is the hot conductor that's been turned off. The neutral is now the shell. Gotcha. You're not going to get hurt. Okay, so headline here. I'm definitely going to have that one in my bag. You definitely want to keep one of those. Of these two right here, you think I should have both? Definitely this one if you have three prongs. If you're stuck with two prongs somewhere, that's good to have so you know what's going on. Yeah, I'm going to have all three. A bunch of I would. Of Why not? Good. Thank you, Heath. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.